Hello, people of Earth. Hello, TYT sports fans. Hello, WWE fans. It's me, Josh Poino, Chief Joshiola, Josh Gibbs, whatever you want to call me. I'm back. We're talking about WWE Fastlane, which just wrapped up. It's a little after 11 p.m. here on the East Coast, and this was our last pay-per-view before WrestleMania. WrestleMania is 28 days away in Orlando. WrestleMania 33, the biggest show of the year for professional wrestling fans. So, what matches have we firmly established are going to be on the card that came out of Fastlane? We'll get to those here in one second. Uh, some really quick other notes. Looks like we might be seeing a lot of Kurt Angle after WrestleMania. The rumor is that he's actually going to replace Mick Foley as the manager of Raw. So wouldn't that be interesting? I personally would love to see Kurt Angle in that role. I think he'd be fantastic. He brings a lot of clout as a professional wrestler. He's also someone who's very strong in front of the camera. He's very sure of himself out in the ring talking to people, and the fans love him. Uh, we still don't know what's happening as far as the Big Show and Shaquille O'Neal match that was supposed to happen that at WrestleMania. That was going to be the big celebrity event that was going to go on. And now it's looking like that may not happen. And an event at Fastlane may be something that uh, is going to be the placeholder for that instead. So we'll get to that in one second. Uh, Jack Swagger requested his release from WWE. WWE said no, which now means that Jack Swagger cannot go seek a contract elsewhere for uh, 30 to 90 days. So, unfortunately, it doesn't look like Jack Swagger has a future with WWE, but you won't see him in Ring of Honor, TNA, or anything like that. Speaking of Ring of Honor, TNA, stuff like that, the Hardy Boys, uh, Broken Matt Hardy and Brother Nero showed up at Ring of Honor the other night and won the Ring of Honor Tag Team Belts. Now, does that mean that they will not be showing up at WrestleMania, as was rumored once when their contracts ran out of TNA? Yes and no. They've signed with Ring of Honor full-time. However, Ring of Honor is notorious for letting their stars go out to other promotions and wrestle for them. They don't have the stranglehold that somebody like WWE or like TNA would hold on their talent. So... It, don't count it out. It's professional wrestling. You never say never. All right. These rules aren't uh, aren't as hard and fast as other sports. Like Tom Brady is not going to suddenly show up and play for the Raiders for a game or two next season. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so it's it's not out of the question that we may still see the Hardys at WrestleMania. Anything can happen at the biggest show of the year. So who knows? But it's still great to see them uh, continuing their fantastic streak. Okay. So let's get to WrestleMania, and let's get to Fastlane. I should say. Uh, Fastlane continued the streak of being the worst pay-per-view of the year. Here's my review of Fastlane. You, you can have your own opinion on it, but that's mine. It, here's my argument. You can say that it was a pay-per-view, and we can go ahead and just stop there. I mean, the, the show was kind of abysmal from start to finish. And I think the problem is because the matches don't really have a lot of consequence to them. And if they do, they're, they're foreseen miles in advance. And I'll tell you why in one second. Let, let's, let's run down the card real quick. Okay. First match, Zayn versus Samoa Joe. This is Samoa Joe's his main roster pay-per-view debut. You know, this is his first you know, big match at a pay-per-view. Anyone think he's going to lose to Sami Zayn in his first pay-per-view? He's the destroyer. He's Triple H's right-hand man. He's the guy who took out Seth Rollins and all this stuff. So you think they're going to throw him under the bus driven by Sami Zayn? There ain't no way. No one thought that, that he's going to lose. And of course he doesn't. He, he practically squashed Sami Zayn. I mean, the match went on a little longer than I expected. But overall, it was a complete destruction. And Samoa Joe comes out the winner. Of course he does. All right. Second match. Uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus Enzo and Cass. Gallows and Anderson are the tag champs. Are they really going to lose their belts this close to WrestleMania? To, of all people, Enzo and Cass, who have been having problems as of late. I didn't, I didn't think the team was going to break up uh, tonight at Fastlane, but I think that separation is coming. I mean, Enzo Amore is fantastic on the mic. He's, he's a great, you know, he gets the crowd hyped up. Everybody likes his phrases and stuff like that. But in ring, he's just okay. He takes really good bumps and he sells the hell out of them. But other than that, he's just not that good compared to Big Cass, who does have a future as a big man singles competitor in a business where there aren't enough big men, especially somebody of his size. So he definitely has a bright future ahead of him, whereas I don't think uh, he, he and Enzo's days as a tag team are short for this world. And so Gallows and Anderson win, and they retain. Uh, nothing, really ha nothing really significant happened in that match, as we expected. The tag champs retained, and they'll carry it through to WrestleMania. 
Uh, third match of the night was Sasha Banks and Nia Jax. Okay, this one actually did surprise me, but not in a good way. Okay, Nia Jax has been built up as this dominant woman in the female division. Now, I don't, I know some people don't like her for whatever reason, but she's the female Braun Strowman. She's being just as dominant. So, fighting a Sasha Banks who recently is coming off of an injury, this should have been a no-brainer, as Nia should have just squashed her and then continued on and then uh, go ahead and made a run for the title at WrestleMania. But instead, the match goes on way too long, and then Sasha won with this rolling back pin that, I mean... Nia Jax is like twice her size. There's no way that, that a that a back pinup should have covered her. She should have just been able to shrug her off. But she got the win, and now who, I, she completely derailed all of Nia Jax's momentum. So now, okay, did that match mean anything as far as whether or not there's still going to be a fatal four-way at WrestleMania for the Women's Championship? I don't think so. So why give that match to Sasha Banks and completely undercut all the work you've done for Nia Jax? But what do I know? Uh, number four, you had this really weird match that wasn't announced on the card originally. Just kind of threw it in there. Rusev and Jinder Mahal, before the, the show started, were complaining that they weren't on the card. So for some reason, they just get kind of thrown in. They're like, okay, well, here, now you're on the card. and But they didn't say who their opponent was going to be. So Rusev and Jinder Mahal come out, and they're battling each other. And then Cesaro's music goes off and he and, and Cesaro and Jinder Mahal have a match and it goes back and forth. It's okay. Cesaro wins because he's the good guy. So, you know, good guy typically wins in this scenario. And then after the match, Rusev starts messing with Jinder, Jinder Mahal again. He starts picking on him and then Big Show's music comes out. This gets us back to what we were talking about earlier about whether or not Big Show and Shaquille O'Neal are still having their match at WrestleMania. If Big Show is coming out here to mess with Rusev, they have a, a, a pretty decent back and forth for big guys, and Big Show eventually gets the win. So does this mean they're going to have an official match now at WrestleMania, and that's going to take the place that would have been for Big Show and Shaquille O'Neal? I guess we'll see in the in the Raws that are coming up. There's no other pay-per-views for them to have a rematch at, so WrestleMania would be their first opportunity. So it's looking like that's what might be going on, is that we might, we're going to get the Bulgarian Brute versus the Big Show. So... I'm not mad at that match. I mean, Big Show is a classic, and, and he's a hard worker, and, and Rusev is absolutely fantastic, too. So we'll see. Uh, next, we had Reigns versus Strowman. This one, or I'm sorry, we had uh, Neville and Gallagher came up next. Cruiserweight division needed Neville to turn heel. We've said that before. He's still the best thing that they have. Uh, Jack Gallagher is also a really talented guy, especially from someone who doesn't look like he would have the, the amount of talent that he does. But they put on a fantastic match. The, the cruiserweights are, are this hidden gem a lot. The 305 Live hasn't, or 205 Live hasn't been as popular as WWE wanted it to be ratings wise, but you're still showcasing a lot of great talent in there. And uh, with Neville and Gallagher in there together, you have sort of the best of what you can get from the cruiserweights division. And they put on a really solid performance, some great spots, some great bumps. Gallagher just gets thrown all around the ring because Neville's a much bigger dude. But he still just keeps coming back, and it's in a realistic way. So you're not looking at it and saying, well, this is, this is absolutely preposterous that this is happening. So it was very entertaining to watch. Ultimately, Neville, as the, the Cruiserweight champion, he still gets the win and retains his belt, and he'll carry it through to the big show, uh, the big show of shows in 28 days. But still a great, great show. Uh, then we had the Reigns and Strowman match. Another one, everyone kind of thought, oh, well, you know, Storm is just going to destroy the guy because then he's going to go in and then Reigns and The Undertaker are supposed to have a match at WrestleMania. I personally thought The Undertaker was going to interfere in this match because they haven't had any kind of interaction since Roman Reigns eliminated The Undertaker at the Royal Rumble. And ever since then, everyone thought, okay, well, that's going to set up Reigns and Undertaker. They haven't done anything to advance that storyline, so this would have been the perfect time. Nope. No Undertaker, no creepy music, no video message, no nothing. Uh, match goes, the big men, they were kind of gassed early, so there was a lot of rest holds, so that made the match pretty slow as pace goes. Uh, and then at the very end, for some reason, Braun Strowman, this seven-foot-tall Braun Strowman, goes to the top rope to do a high-risk maneuver, and Roman Reigns just moves out of the way. And then Super Superman punches him, and, and Spear, that's the end. And... Roman Reigns gets a victory and pisses off a lot of people because some people just don't like seeing Roman Reigns get a victory of any kind. So, Reigns wins. Who knows? I doubt that's going to be the end of that feud. We're still going to see some on Raw. But why they gave that win to Reigns, I don't know. Again, you're undercutting all the work that Strowman had been doing over the past few weeks. Uh, Bailey and Charlotte... 
this match also didn't matter to me. Okay, Bailey's the champ, but if the the uh, prevailing storyline is that it's going to be a fatal four way at WrestleMania for the women's championship, so does it really matter who's got the belt here? Not really. But okay, I think they gave it to Bailey way too early anyway, so she's not nearly at Charlotte Flair's level. But they have the match; it goes on, and uh, Sasha actually comes out at the end, and it looked like she was going to interfere, but Charlotte kind of redirected her judo style, and and uh, Sasha didn't really get a chance to do anything. So there technically wasn't really any interference that would have assisted Bailey in the in the match. But Bailey's able to get the the Bailey to Bailey suplex, which is another just ridiculous finishing move if you ask me it's a suplex it'd be different if it was off the top rope that'd be great but a regular suplex as your finishing move come on man give me a break i get it she's really really tiny and there's not much she can do but still okay what are you gonna do so but bailey gets the victory and it's it's it was a clean victory i guess against charlotte and that that breaks charlotte's streak that she had of winning at pay-per-views so i guess that's something monumental that happened that people can say hey look that was kind of important sure so, and that leads us to the last match of the night, Kevin Owens versus Goldberg. Now, keep in mind, by the, by the time this match was going on, it was past 11. So after the video package and after those super long entrances with Goldberg getting flanked by security guards, which, by the way, doesn't make any sense to me. Why does he need security to bring him to the ring? Uh, by the time all that's over, it's past 11. So, okay, what are we going to do? Kevin Owens takes... He keeps toying with people. He get, he steps in the ring, then he steps out of the ring, steps into the ring, steps out of the ring, pisses a lot of people off, gets exactly the reaction he wants, finally jumps in the ring. He's like, let's do this. And Chris Jericho's music goes off. Chris Jericho starts coming down the ramp. Kevin Owens is distracted just long enough to take a spear and a jackhammer from Goldberg. Cover. It's over. Goldberg is your new WWE Universal Champion, which means that Goldberg and Brock Lesnar will face each other for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. This is also a match that everyone saw coming. Everybody knew Goldberg was going to win this match. No one said Kevin Owens is going to retain. Everyone, Okay, we, we saw the writing on the wall, and this is Fastlane's problem. The majority of matches at Fastlane aren't introducing anything new and different coming into WrestleMania. They're just they're simple reaffirmations of matches we already know are going to happen, even when the results are like this that Kevin Owens was not going to retain his belt, that Goldberg was going to win the belt, and it's going to be Goldberg and Lesnar. We had, we've been saying that for weeks, that that was going to happen, and it's frustrating for us as fans to watch matches at a, pay per, at a major pay-per-view event where you know the outcome. The last two fast lanes have been the exact same way as this third one is. So if anything, at least they're consistent. The fast lane pay-per-view is consistently the worst of the year. And good thing there was no different this year. So, WrestleMania 33 is coming up soon. We'll probably do a, a video right before that happens. I will be in Orlando for the event, so I won't be able to uh, do a video right after the words, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately, depending on whether or not you enjoy these. But either way, we'll definitely do one in the build-up to the biggest show of the year. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Hope you enjoy all of these videos. As always, please leave a comment in the section below. As you've seen in previous videos, I jump in there. We'll debate back and forth about anything and everything you want, so long as you're being nice. Come on. It's 2017. We can at least be polite to each other. Or maybe not. We'll see. Anyway, thanks again, guys. See you later. Good night.